Hey, what is up, everybody? I'm here with Eric Weaver, the one, the only. And uh, <laughs> Eric, got to be straight up with you. You're a uh, you're dude in high demand. The people have told me to come talk with you. And, um, you know, if, if you were a rapper, I'm starting to think that you'd be like, run DMC <laughs> in this <laughs> whole social media <laughs> online marketing thing. So, uh, yeah, thanks for talking with me, Eric. Sure. Um, if you could, just uh, introduce yourself. Well, uh, what is there to say? I am a grizzled digital veteran. I have seen and done pretty much everything. I got on the internet in 70, 79, when it was still called the ARPANET, and uh, was playing net track, uh, network games in 1980. So uh, whenever I hear people say they're digital veterans, or digital natives, I laugh because I'm a 47-year-old digital native. <laughs> Um, but I've been I've been uh, online since '77. I was fortunate enough to have uh, landed in Cincinnati, Ohio, in '94, right as the commercial inter internet was taking off, mm -hmm. and uh, I got to build uh, parts of PG.com for Procter Gamble. I got to launch Kraft Foods' first intranet. Mm -hmm. I got to build uh, websites for RCA and Johnson and Johnson and uh, General Electric. Built an interactive. Uh, lobby for their uh, customer center in Louisville, Kentucky, and really got to, it was all experimental, it was totally, it's like social media is now, right, it was mm -hmm. very, very experimental, it was very, um, uh, it was a hobby turned into work, and people were actually paying for this stuff, mm -hmm. and I would get questions like, should we be on the web, you know, why should we have email when we have perfectly good fax machines and voicemail, and we know <laughs> where that went, right, so mm -hmm. it's a, um, I've, I've helped do a lot of things online. I helped convince four dealers that they needed to have uh, internet managers within their dealerships. Uh, I helped uh, an Irish town win $32 million from the Irish government. What? So the whole town was wired, uh, wired uh, and on, on, on digital crack, <laughs> as uh, and steroids. And uh, um, yeah, I've just been doing this for a long time. It's, it's a lot of fun and I've, it's amazing seeing it change and grow and now the whole social component of it is really skyrocketed, so it's a lot of fun. Wow, very cool. So, maybe the run DMC analogy was <laughs> accurate. Um, so, speaking of social media, um, curious as to what about it attracts you to it? I think it is a way to really get to know people. And mm -hmm. I don't mean just on a, on a, a hello, you know, handshake, business card kind of sense. You get to really connect with people on a deeper level, on a personal level and a professional level, and you get to get insight into their lives in ways that can be mundane and really boring, mm -hmm. but can also be really connective. Mm -hmm. So if I find out that uh, someone else had a daughter in high school who uh, went to the same high school as, as mine, and uh, someone uh, drew a gun and came on campus with a gun, and the cops tackled them and all that stuff, which is a true story, um, then the connection is so much stronger, because even though we may not connect over work or whatever, I, you know, there's this very personal, very impactful connection. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I can, you know, through Facebook especially, or Twitter, you can get a sense of what people's lives are like uh, and connect unexpectedly in random ways that, that no one was thinking about that actually make the connection much more powerful. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. So, so you've been doing it for quite some time. And, uh, you're considered an authority on the subject. Um, so you do quite a bit of speaking on the matter, mm -hmm. don't you? Um, can you tell me about some of the topics you might talk about? Sure. Or... Um, I, my big thing is trust. I think that trust is the last currency. I think that uh, uh, we're seeing trust crumble in schools where schools can't keep my daughter safe. Uh, mm -hmm. In banks, the banks can't hold on to my money. Uh, financial advisors are giving me the wrong information. Um, my, I don't necessarily know if my boss will protect my family and I, you know, with the job. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if my coworkers will will knife me in the back to get a promotion, keep their jobs. You know, there, a lot of these sort of pillars of trust that we've we've depended on are now crumbling. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds dramatic, but I, I really truly believe this. And so, to me. Trust is really the last thing that we can hold on to. And there are a lot of stats uh, in the last year about how trust has just sort of fallen off a cliff in business. Um, I think it's happening in personal matters as well. So when, when you can get a sense for what I'm like and you can get a sense for whether or not I'm trustworthy to you, we're more likely to do business together. Mm 
Uh, and and I, I really believe that marketers in particular over the last few decades have become more and more and more self-interested. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've put their own quarterly numbers before uh, the consumer or the, or the prospect. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, people don't trust advertising or advertisers or marketers. They think that they're, they're shysters, they're snake oil salesmen, they're, mm -hmm. trying, to, they're trying to get my money. And what a, what a crazy relationship to have with people who are buying your stuff, right? So I think that social media offers uh, marketers and businesses and just people in general the chance to build trust in themselves so that business can happen. Because I, I saw one statistic that said 91% of people will buy from companies they trust, 77 refuse to buy from companies they do not trust. So if um, anything is a driver of money changing hands, it's trust. Right. So that's my big topic that I, I, I do variations on uh, uh, when I speak, and I, I really think it is the, a hugely important cultural trend that no one really has thought about. Mm -hmm. they're, they're thinking in terms of the tools, you know, should I be on Twitter? Well, maybe the question is, should you be trusted, and is there a way to spread that trust between other people? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really interesting. That's a uh, those statistics are pretty overwhelming, then. Um, so, but another cool thing about you is that you really are, I guess, a marketing superhero, so to speak, <laughs> in the way that you said, you know, you you use your powers for good. So, give, give me that bowl of crack back. <laughs> <laughs> but you you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's very cool. I you and Patrick Byers seem to have that same mentality. Um, why is it important to you? I think that as things change, if you look at everything from the environment to uh, scandal to, to uh, the, the mess that we're in with, just across the board, everything. Uh, again, getting back to those pillars crumbling, uh, people are, are, the stakes are higher for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and people's emotions are getting more and more ratcheted up. Um, and I'm seeing this growing, it's almost a dichotomy in society where there are the folks who see things going south and want to do something to help. They want to roll up their sleeves. The Iran election is a huge example of people wanting to affect change and willing to be in the line of fire to do it. I think that there are, are folks who want to give back and help society, whether it be uh, uh, holding uh, you know, uh, political town hall meetings in their home or whether it uh, be attending green meetups or, or whatever, they want to do something. Twestable, a great example of people wanting to gather and, and donate money to help uh, bring clean water to kids. Mm -hmm. um, there are also folks you're seeing in the business environment who are just getting really clingy and controlling and, and negative and out for themselves. Mm -hmm. So it, it feels like people are getting off the fence. They're going one way or the other. And so, you know, I. Some of my clients, I helped launch Lincoln Navigator. What an awesome thing for the planet. I helped, uh, uh -huh. I managed the De Beers website for, you know, the, for that company, which uh, I, I want to be careful what I say, so I'm going to get into trouble. <laughs> but, you know, whether it, there, there are things that don't give back. Mm -hmm. There are things that make some people rich. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the point? You know, if, if, the, if the environment is being destroyed and we're running out of clean water and arable land and all these different things, what do a few more dollars make? What, what, you know, what's the point? So I uh, am a, a little embarrassed about some of the clients I've had in the past um, who were fun to work with and good on my portfolio, but ultimately it doesn't help the planet. Their products don't help the planet. So I really want to do something to give back. So right now I'm working with Nature's Path Foods uh, and we're helping extend uh, sort of organic thinking and sustainability concepts into their marketing efforts and into general awareness. We're helping... Um, uh, Puget Sound Energy with a new project to uh, sort of uh, launch their green efforts into mm -hmm. the social marketing space. And uh, those kind of clients feel great. Uh, helping uh, Doug Winfield with Twestable, uh, home, local homelessness is a big deal to me as well. So I, I'd like to use these tools and use my marketing skills for good rather than just pimping more product. In there. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. Well, um, I really appreciate you. Uh, speaking with me today. Thank sure. you very much for the opportunity. Thanks, Kenny.